Hello internet, I am Udo ADHD. Welcome to my channel where I talk about whatever I want from a neurodivergent point of view. If you are new, just check and see if you vibe, then subscribe. And we are a small channel, so let yourself be known in the comments so we can say hi to you back and we'll know that you're part of the tribe. So I actually did want to talk about somebody else today. I wanted to talk about Camille Colazzo and uh, this I just found her channel. I'm loving it because she's calling out the BS and all this financial guru stuff on YouTube and just internet content. But first, let us, I, I think I do have to mention the update about Logan Paul. I'm sure you're all aware he apologized. And um, probably his lawyers told him, Logan, if you go through with this nonsense, you're going to be in big legal trouble yourself. And uh, um, we're all on the edge of our seats to see what new video Logan Paul is putting out. Is he going to take true accountability? And Logan, listen to me very closely on the off chance that you're watching this. Refund. Refund your consumers. Yes, including the guy that you said did a pump and dump himself. Refund all of your retail consumers. This is how you can actually revive your reputation. I promise you, there are people who didn't even like you before this, who will become your champion. They will be on your side. If you take this opportunity to actually refund people, that builds trust. That makes people feel like you are trustworthy, that you will do the right thing. Even if you did have to take a severe embarrassing public blitzing to knock the sense into your head. But sense would truly be knocked in if you refund those people and you won't regret it i mean no you you maybe you can't do all of the fun stuff that you were used to doing but your reputation i think is worth it and you'll be able to do something better and greater i don't think he's going to refund the people though but i'm just saying if he did it would it wouldn't just repair his reputation it would give him a new level of respect and credibility if he did well we'll see what happens this has been quite an entertaining first week of the year so let's talk about this uh, this creator Camille Colazzo that I just discovered so if you were just here for the Logan Paul update you know we'll see you later so Camille Colazzo she used to make finance content and it's the kind that I never would subscribe to it's the kind where it's like Oh, if you um, don't wash your, if you wash your clothes once a week instead of twice a week, you can actually save money on your utility bill. If you don't buy Starbucks every day, that can save you money. It was like that type of generic crap that I don't care for. She has since stopped. She has seen the error in her way. She has seen that it's just BS. And a lot of these people who are giving financial advice are giving BS advice. And I completely agree. So, um, I have been enjoying her new content and I saw this video, the business coaches selling courses scam. I am somebody who used to be an avid purchaser of online programs and if I had the money, I would join mastermind groups and I just used to be really into that because I was, I was trying to find my way. I was trying to figure out how can I make it in this life? Like how can I not be homeless? How can I be happy? Like it just always felt like life was just this big game and everybody knew the secret. Everybody understood the game except for me. And I just wanted, needed some guidance. And, um, I was seeking that guidance through these e-courses. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, the more I digest on it and think about it, there's a lot of things that contribute to that feeling, you know, like obviously being, being neurodivergent, uh, contributed to that feeling, but also, you know, I really took for granted, um, that I'm an immigrant, my, my whole f family's immigrants, and that severely affects your understanding of, uh, of how to relate to people and, and live and make it, um, here, um, like there's so many reasons why I was a prime target, for stuff like these e-courses and seminars and stuff like that. So I wanted to watch this. 
um, and just react to it and give my two cents as somebody who was so heavily a part of this kind of stuff. The rise of business coaches in online courses has exploded over the years. With the increasing popularity of the gig economy, more and more women are looking for ways to improve their skills and grow their businesses. According to Indeed.com, a business coach is a professional mentor who supports, educates, and motivates business owners. This supports, educates, and motivates business owners. This coaching for women can take on many forms from one-on-one -on -one coaching to group coaching programs and of course online courses according right. to the international coaching federation women make up 75 percent of all coaches dominating the industry something interesting about this icf is i back when i was super into coaching and coaches and looking for a coach and potentially maybe becoming a coach myself when i say coach we're talking about business coach or life coach um, this ICF, it's really just, it's really just like a club, like, like basically trying to professionalize the industry of coaching and they sell courses and it, it's just basically, it's an organization that, that tries to professionalize this industry, try to create some kind of standard of, of quality in this industry. But, you know, it's not backed by anything. It's not, it doesn't really mean anything. So if you see somebody who says they're ICF accredited or whatever certified, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. We're going to dive into the world of business, online coaches, selling courses that promise you the path to financial freedom. While doing the research for this video, I found so many types of online. Co Is she talking too fast for y'all? Let me make it plus. Coaches and courses from money to business, influencing, dating, fitness, of course, and to my surprise, OnlyFans. Yes, you can now mm -hmm. take a course that will teach you how to be successful on OnlyFans. So the thing about courses is all that's required for you to successfully sell the course is if you appear successful. So if you appear successful on YouTube, on, on any platform, including OnlyFans, any platform that people know you can make money through, you can sell a course. And a lot of people are selling courses uh, that talk about things that they don't do themselves. Um, Jake Paul is a great example of somebody who he made a, a course on how to succeed on YouTube and all of the advice in the course are things that he actually did not do whatsoever. Um, that's not to say that all of these courses are bad, but you know what? I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to just say the generalization that these courses are bad because even if... The person is like, no, but I did do all of these things. My course is legit. All the things I say in my course are the things that I did to be successful on the platform. Even if it's true, the platforms are changing on like a weekly, monthly basis. So what worked for you five months ago, probably is not gonna work anymore. And the thing about these courses is, they are not updated. <laughs> very rarely, it's very rare that I see, like the literally the only course I've ever seen about social media that is frequently updated, it's a free course. I don't remember it off the top of my head right now, but it's a free course. Um, people are better off just like, like looking up the tips for free online. I think the only benefit to a course uh, about a platform would be if you were seeking camaraderie or a coach, if you could like have interaction with the person who sold it to you, or there's a community of people who are trying to make it, something like that. But to pay money for just the content, just the lessons, I think that's very dumb because a lot of these people who are successful are just making a BS course as a money grab. And even if they are genuine, it's probably not updated by the time that you even buy the course. 
What a time, what a time to be alive. It is impossible to cover the world of online coaching in one single video. So if you're interested in this particular topic, please comment down below and let me know. Maybe we can make it a series and talk about different types of coaching scams. So please comment down below. Mm. I'm kind of excited. For I, think I also want to leave a note here that the world of fake business gurus has been extensively covered by male creators here on YouTube. Yeah. So in today's video, I am going to focus on the business coaches that prey on female entrepreneurs. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, CoffeeZilla, for example, He's a man and he's usually talking about male grifters um, like Dan Locke, Andrew Tate, etc. But, you know, women are doing this, too. And there's a lot of them. Like we saw the statistics said that there's 75 percent coaches uh, that are women. So there's actually a lot of them and they are praying. Uh, they prey on um are in the insecurities that many of us share as women the lies they tell to scam women out of thousands of dollars and how to spot them in recent years social media has been flooded with business influencers using their picture perfect lifestyle as bait to sell courses there's a lot of business women claiming empowerment as a mm. tool to prey on vulnerable women in instagram is the Right. Um, I used to be so into that hashtag boss babe. I was super into it. I was super into boss babe.com like that, that Instagram handle boss babe that they would post the inspirational quotes and stuff like that. And, um, it is about women's empowerment. Um, I never fully understood that, you know, I, because I just felt like, um, like I under I like I I got it, but also I just I just always thought it's just a marketing tactic. I just saw it as a way to to market to women, to make women feel like, hey, this we made this with you in mind. Um, but the more you get into it, and the more of these gurus you meet, the more it truly does start to just feel like it's just a marketing tactic. Um, but they will use things that um that you that you do think about like you know are are you a how especially for the moms especially for the moms um this concept of if you are a housewife if you're a house mother you do need to have some sort of income coming in for yourself um to empower yourself in case anything happens um, to, so you're not, you know, out of the game. Um, so, you know, like whatever, um, it is very easy, uh, to target, um, women who, who s stay at home. The perfect playground for these con artists. I looked at dozens of Instagram business coaches and a lot of them lack transparency in what they're selling. They all speak about mindset and motivation and the power of believing in yourself. But That's my biggest pet peeve is this mindset thing. Like all of these courses, they always start out with a chapter that's called mindset. And they are always saying how, well, we need to make sure that you have the right mindset to succeed. And the way I feel about it is if you bought the course, you already have the mindset. If you are searching for the course, you have the mindset that you have all that's necessary. <laughs> and this mindset thing is, is about, you know, basically just trying to make you feel good. You know, the, you think that, do you think that nobody wants your service because so many people already offer that service? Well, you have something unique that nobody else has. What if there was no Burger King because there was already a McDonald's? Like stuff like that. Um, affirmations, saying your affirmations. Um, and I just feel like it's BS because on the flip side, it also creates this mentality that if you don't succeed, if you don't get the money that you're seeking, that there was something wrong with your mindset. They, they, they like using that because there, it's not a tangible thing. You can't 
identify it. You you can't like look into somebody's brain and and just oh there it is right there. That's the limiting belief that's been holding you back. You can't do that. It forces the person to accept full responsibility for everything that happened, including the things that aren't actually in their control because you have this m- mindset that you are attracting things that your mind is just inadvertently creating the reality of your situation. To some degree, we all understand how that makes sense. We all understand how that works, right? Like the reason there is a bottle in my proximity is because I am thirsty and I prioritize making sure I'm not thirsty. If I did not have the mindset of prioritizing my thirst, there would no, there would be no water bottle in my proximity. Like we understand to a certain degree how your mind works, what your mindset is, does affect your reality. But they take it too far oftentimes with this mindset thing. And in the course, it's um, some courses do f- just flat out say this and some courses don't say it. Some courses like this one here that she's highlighting, the five ways to make money by being you. Like sometimes it's just like really cute um, and positive. But once it gets time to, hey, this isn't working for me. I don't like this. Once it gets time to you're making uh, complaints or critiques of the course, that's when they start showing you the flip side of, well, you actually didn't have the right mindset for it. And that just drives me insane. Um, a lot of the law of attraction type of stuff, I don't like it. I, the first video I posted this year, I said I manifested a new life for myself, which I did. But <laughs> I'm kind of saying that tongue in cheek uh, because I just know manifestation is a buzzword people like to see. And I guess, yeah, I did manifest it. But um, there's a lot of things that went into play with that. Um, I don't I don't see it. I don't believe it as just it just magically happened. <laughs> But that's kind of how they make this mindset thing. That's kind of how they make it seem. And lastly, before I move on, because I guess I'm really passionate about this point, but a lot of places, you know, um, um, a lot of people, a lot of these gurus, they kind of use this mindset teaching as a way to begin indoctrinating you and begin brainwashing you so that you see them as the only person who can provide you answers. So any mistake that they make, you're not critical of them. Uh, You try to see the lesson in everything that they say and do. Um, They're trying to frame, pre-frame your mind uh, to to just eat the BS. And a lot of them do this. And I see that now. Um, so for all those reasons, I don't like, I, I, I kind of, when, when we're talking about mindset, when a business course wants to start out with mindset, I just kind of roll my eyes. Now, not to say that I don't like motivational speeches and stuff like that. I still really like that stuff. And every now and then somebody wants to talk to me about mindset and I'm like, that's actually really good. But there is so much BS when it comes to this mindset thing that I can't help it. I roll my eyes immediately. None of them give you actual business advice. They are promising their clients the key to success, often through some sort of secret or insider knowledge that they claim to know. But a closer look at these entrepreneurs reveals the dark truth. These business coaches do not have any valuable business advice. They are simply going to teach you how to teach. That's how a lot of these courses are. So um, let's say you sign up for a business coaching uh, e-course. It's a business coach that's teaching you how to be a business coach (laughs) and how to make your own business coaching e-course. So you can basically copy and paste what your guru is doing. And then your students can copy and paste what you're doing. And it just goes on and on. And it feels like, where is the value that's actually being generated here? I don't know the word for it. I feel like there has to be a better way to explain why this is so shady. Uh, But I just feel like we intuitively understand that if your course is teaching somebody how to make a course, and that 
their course is teaching somebody how to make a course. And that's just how it keeps going down. That it something about that doesn't seem right. One of the main problems with business coaching is the issue of credibility and expertise. With the rise of social media, it has become oh my so gosh. easy for anyone to present themselves as an expert. This can make it so hard for people. So this Stormy Wellington, if you don't know about her, let me see if I can pull up her video that went viral. So she had this mastermind for women. It was $10,000 and she went viral because they were eating and the lesson that she gave while they were eating just sounded absolutely ridiculous. You can't even pay me a day. They put this on my plate. I will not let, no, I don't do what they do. I do what I do. Mm. I'm a visionary. I believe it. Mm. But she's I would coach. never eat a plate that looked like this. You can't even pay me a million dollars to do that to myself. Mm. Oh my God. Because it comes over better than that. That's mm. low vibration. And you took it. I would have been like, I'm playing like that. I'll tell you what I want. You don't tell me what I want. So my thought process is that you can put it on my plate, but I don't have to eat it. I got the distance. I won't even look at it and look that make you look bad. I'm a queen. Queen is plate for me. Like, mm. about, if we have two plate, we play together. And so who's royalty? They would say this person. Mm. I agree. That's a <laughs> good way. <laughs> this is so serious about shit. Yeah, because it's a lot of people that just let people give them what they want them to have. Yeah. And they just okay, I gotta pause it. So that went viral because it just is absolutely ridiculous that she's calling the her students food hood rat food, low vibrational. It's not queen food. Her food is queen food. Her the Stormy is her name. Coach Stormy. Her plate had corn, chicken, shrimp, and the student's co uh, plate had the same thing, including some carbs, okay? She had a hot dog bun. She had a hamburger bun. She had <clears throat> uh, mashed potatoes. So is it the carbs that turn her from a queen to a peasant? Um, what's funny about this is because you paid so much money, I I've seen this firsthand because you pay so much money you are determined to extract value out of everything so your coach is basically saying you're fat and you shouldn't be eating carbs that's basically what she's saying because this is the food that she catered storm me call this barbecue place and did not tell them please do not bring no mashed potatoes or hamburgers this is the food that Stormy ordered for herself and her students. And you're telling this woman who paid you $10,000 that it's low vibrational plate, even though it's all just barbecue. You paid, this student paid so much money that she is trying to extract value from every interaction. So it, it, like if, if we were just chilling and somebody did that to, to you, what, like, I don't know, like, you'll take it how you take it, right? Some people may take offense, some people will make it a joke, so, like, some people may find it funny, whatever. But she is trying to turn this into a lesson. And <laughs> she is trying to translate what her coach is saying into something that could be usable, right? Um, I understand the lesson, but it, it, it actually, that's, it's actually kind of nonsensical. And is people started dragging Coach Stormy for this. Um, while they were still on the trip, they were seeing the memes and they responded to it um, with a video that didn't help at all. Uh, another video that's like, girl, you still don't make sense. And you're still just talking. Coach Stormy strikes me as that kind of person who they just have the gift of gab. Uh, Grant Cardone is kind of like that. Grant Cardone. Right, he just loves to talk. He'll just talk, 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 talk. He'll just talk, 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 talk. Um, and because he's rich and successful, people feel like there has to be something he's saying that is a value, and they interpret for him. I just notice this a lot with grifters and gurus, especially the ones who love to talk like Stormy. You're just talking, and you position yourself in a way that people value you so highly that they're that they're trying to make sense out of what you're saying essentially doing that work for you right it should be the coach's job to make what they're saying make sense but you have the students do that for you um and there's another clip where all the students they were um eating at a restaurant right um 
I don't know. Pay the check. They were all eating at a restaurant. I don't think I can find that clip. They were all together eating at a restaurant. And it was supposed, Stormy said that she would pay for it. And then she said, all right, actually, I'm not, I'm not paying for it. We're going to do a Russian roulette to see who'll pay for it. Everybody put your credit cards in the middle and we're going to pick randomly who pays for it. And supposedly that's supposed to be a lesson in having an abundance mindset of always being ready and having an abundance mindset when that's no, that's not what you're teaching these women. I mean, (laughs) <laughs> you're just you're taking oh lord let me that person looked nude so i need to like get that off but you get my point right very ridiculous very silly and you're charging um so much money uh to learn from you now uh there's some people who they're into that right there's a time that i would be if i had 10 grand I would have paid to be on that yacht. Um, There's people who are into it and that's great. But I I do think calling stuff out like this is good. Even if you're like, but I like that. That's what I want. I just resonate with what she's saying. Like, that's the kind of coach I want. That's fine because people um, exposing uh, or giving their opinion on like how this comes off, that shouldn't that just means you have more information. You know, that just means you have more perspectives to make a decision that's good for you. My biggest concern with these kind of, these kind of grifty people, like I use the term grifty and grifter when maybe it's technically not a scam, but we would all call it a scam, but I know you're going to be offended if I called you a scam. So I was just going to say you're a grifter. Okay. You're trying to, you're towing the line. And the thing about these people is some people, ju- they want that. They like that. And I think as long as you are aware of what you're getting into, then you can make a decision for yourself. Well, to know who is legit and who isn't. And most importantly, this can lead to terrible advice. A lot of these so-called business coaches do not have any actual experience in business. Much like a pyramid scheme, their expensive courses can only teach you how to sell expensive courses to other people. They don't teach you any vital business skills, such as how to secure capital, how to do market research, anything about business licensing, but instead they promise to teach you the strategies that can make you $10,000 a month. If you- right. That's always what I see. I ne- I have never seen an influencer type course that actually talks about the practical steps to starting a business, to running a business. They always are talking about strategies, regardless of whether these strategies are outdated or not. Talk about strategies that can make you five figures a month, six figures, seven figures, eight figures believe in yourself and listen i respect sales as a profession one of my closest friends. right if you believe in yourself i like she added that in is in sales and corporate sales and under a huge corporation with lots of employees and resources she handles multi-million dollar contracts but it took her 10 years of hard work dedication of course a little bit of luck to be the best sales professional in her area you're not going to become this incredible salesperson that gets to sell thousands and thousands of courses every month by taking one course about selling. There are no shortcuts in business. You have to work hard. You have to know the right people. There are actual people who go to business school who work really hard and they still fail, right? But this is where the mind games and the you know overly optimistic pep talk that you get from these business coaches comes into play. Yeah, I think... Um these e-courses make people feel good and there's value in making people feel good. People are willing to pay money to feel good, but it's just disheartening when, when these people, they also want a result, but all you've done for them is made, you've given them hope. You've made them feel nice about themselves, but you are not actually helping them get the results. And that's disheartening looking at dozens of business coaches on Instagram, 
one thing became very clear to me, and that is how these coaches are experts at crafting the perfect message to appeal to your emotions. Invest in yourself, they tell you, <laughs> as in take the plunge and buy the $2,000 course that is gonna transform your life. How? Right, I had a call with this one lady. She actually worked for Marie Forleo, who Marie Forleo is gonna come up again in this video. And she was brand new to coaching. She was charging $5,000 for one or two months of her coaching. Um, I said, that's too expensive. She said, is it too expensive? Or are you not willing to, you know, you're not willing to change your life? And I was like, girl, wh wh how, whatever, however you want to call it, I'm not paying you $5,000. <laughs> and she was like, well, you know, before we get off the call, <clears throat> I just need to know, you know, the more truthful answer because it's actually not too expensive. There are people who pay it, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, I'm, I'm not willing to change my life with you. No. Yeah. How about that? Like they use, there is so, it's so manipulative because, um, you know, I, you know, I like that lady. That's why I even got on the phone call with her, but I wasn't starstruck by her. I wasn't enamored with her. Had it been somebody, you know, that you were enamored with, a lot of people, they feel like, oh my gosh, I can't let so-and-so down. I have to tell her that I'm going to try to find a way because it's that important to me. You know, th these sales tactics, these tactics are, they're not just sales tactics anymore when you're also capitalizing on um, the emotional element that these people have about you, how they feel about you, the the cult following type element that you are creating um, to boost your sales. How problematic is it to tell women to invest in themselves by buying a $2,000 course? And then if you don't buy that specific $2,000 course, you don't want it bad enough. You You're not deserving of success. Because if you wanted it bad enough, you would find a way to pay the $2,000. And no, it's not good enough that you found a, a course that teaches the same thing and it's only $200 and that's more affordable for you. Because, well, this course has this benefit and this feature and that benefit and this and that and this and that. And you, I, you're underselling yourself. That's how low you think of yourself. Like, the, like all of these manipulations... I've heard it in, in cults and, and cults like high control groups. And it's interesting to use it, um, in their sales as well. It's like, they're trying to create a cult following. So they use these tactics in their sales as well. Only knowing that women in most cases are the caretakers of other people, whether you have children or not, many women do not have the luxury to invest in themselves for many reasons, but business coaches are relentless and they're going to do everything in their power to push you to take the leap. They're going to tell you that they were just like you, trapped in a nine to five, taking care of everyone else, unhappy. And before you know it, they got you splitting their $2,000 course into four payments. Yeah, that's a huge pet peeve of mine when they go into their, I'm just like you spiel, because many times they're leaving out important components like, you know, I, I would have loved to know that Marie Forleo had a friend who worked for Vogue magazine and stuff. Uh, I'm misquoting. It wasn't, I think it was Cosmopolitan magazine. I don't remember, but she had friends in special places, if you get what I'm saying. And that's definitely helpful for your career. And, you know, she can say all she wants. Well, I was bartending and I was doing this and I was working my ass off and I'm 100% sure she was. But they always leave out the, the little element of something that's actually not relatable that helped them get to where they were. They always leave that out. I believe in the value of online education and a legitimate business coach can be a great tool, but finding them is hard. It is so difficult to find real reviews on these business coaches. They're either. Yeah. Um, I left a review about Marie Forleo's B school and 
you will, it's hard to find somebody be outright negative about it because again, you're a fan of this person. You don't want to let this person down. And Marie has the added element of she has an affiliate program. It pays $1,000 per person that you sign up and it's invitation only. So you don't want to risk not being invited to that affiliate program by leaving a negative review. They're inflating their numbers so they don't have actual clients or they are removing the bad reviews from their website. Also, most of these coaches have affiliate programs in which their students can earn a commission by recommending these courses or leaving positive reviews for other people. I was looking at reviews online of Marie Forleo, the OG business coach, and I couldn't find any negative reviews. This is a woman who claims to have had 80,000 students in her business school. I can make a whole video about Marie Forleo's B school. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to hear it, but um, it was interesting. There are also a lot of people who have been scammed by these business coaches who are dealing with a lot of shame. Those people are not going to come forward and say, I believed in this, here's my negative review. No, a lot of people internalize the failure of not being able to make an online course work. Business coaches. Yeah, people internalize the failure of being scammed or being shysted. Shy shysted. Is that a good word to use? You know, these days, <clears throat> there are words, not these days, these words have always been around, right? But like, there, like there's this YouTube video I made where I said a word and I had no idea it was like an offensive term to like a certain people like from a different country. Like I had no idea. I had no idea. Like people in the comments were like, I don't know if I can listen to you anymore because I can't believe you just said that word. And I'm replying like, what word are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Is shysty? I wonder what's the origins of the word shysty. Well, anyway, I'm hoping that it's not like degrading anybody's culture. But um, what was I even saying? Crap. Uh, what was I saying? Use psychological pressure to make you believe that you are a part of something that others don't know about. And that if you buy their courses, you're going to be in the know of what it means or what it takes to be successful. I'm currently reading a book called... Yeah, that reminds me of Andrew Tate, uh, not to bring him up again, but uh, when he was arrested, I saw a lot of his fans were saying, uh, when you expose the matrix to come after you. And so I became aware that uh, Andrew was kind of marketing his teachings as breaking free from the matrix. And the matrix is that movie. I'm sure, I'm sure you know about the matrix. You take the red pill or the blue pill. And, um, you know, there's Agent Smith that are trying to keep you in the matrix. And I just find it funny because it, it's this concept of we know something special that everyone else doesn't know. All the insiders, we know the truth that all the outsiders, they don't know. The, all the outsiders are sheep. They're sheep. They don't, they don't even know. I feel so sorry for them. I feel so bad for them. But what I find funny is... Andrew Tate is not teaching you how to escape the matrix. He's teaching you how to lean in to the matrix and benefit from the matrix. His whole sales pitch is that you can make more money and have access to more women to sleep with, which is that not what the matrix is trying to teach you to idolize? Is that not what the matrix is trying to uh, have you have your goals towards? So you, when you were in the matrix, you wanted to have more money and more access to women to sleep with. And Andrew Tate is telling you, he can teach you how to have more of that. So in what way are you out of the matrix? If anything, you are now more invested in keeping the matrix in place. Uh, I'm saying all of that to say that it's, it's interesting she brings that up because yes, it's this us versus them. It's this insider's knowledge versus the outsiders who don't know anything type of thing. When in truth, you don't know anything special. You are not special you, because you bought somebody's e-course for how many thousand dollars? You are not a special person. You do not have a special knowledge. You don't. You got shysted. Cultish. And this book is about 
the language that cult leaders use to influence people and the parallels between cult leaders and business coaches selling you these dreams are all there this is why yep. this is a billion dollar that's why i really got into this y'all um hold on let me google real <laughs> i'm feeling so nervous about this word shysted <laughs> Shiesty. If I look up what shiesty means, shiesty. I don't even think I am. Am I spelling it right? Uh, let me try one more time. Shiesty. Shiesty meaning. Dude, this has to. What's the origin of this word? I don't know. Everything's just telling me it's a slang word. Is it, I feel like there has to be some kind of origin of the word. I just want to know the origin now. I just want to know what, like, what, what, what language is it a derivative of? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So, um, I really got into this kind of stuff because, well, for one, um, I was an avid consumer of it, but for two, this is all. It all started with this cult. This cult Nixium. Okay, if you haven't heard about them and you're interested in cults, you definitely got to check out The Vow on HBO Max. Highly recommend it. Um, this is the kind of cult that it starts out as a self-help seminar. And you can go for free. Your first seminar is free. There's all these uh, famous and successful people who highly recommend it. Very similar to Scientology. There's a lot of successful people who recommend that you go to Scientology and you can take a free, whatever, a free personality test and, you know, to sign up for a class. And, you know, it only costs $20 for this course. It's that kind of self-help thing. But once you get into it, it's you can get deeper and deeper and deeper into the BS of it all. And they use the same tactics, they use the same uh, language, they use the same rhetoric that these, um, that these uh, grifters use. And it's the same thing, like the, the same, like even if somebody shows you an expose, like let's say Logan Paul, for example, you're really into Logan Paul. Oh no, Logan Paul's not a good example. I don't think he uses that kind of cult language. I don't think he does that on the regular. So he's actually not a good example, but um, uh, Andrew Tate is a good example. I'm sorry. We just, <laughs> he's just, I'm going to use him as an example. So, um, you know, even if somebody, you know, you rationalize with somebody and show him how it, everything that Andrew Tate is doing and showing is BS. He doesn't mean what he said. His, his real life is not what he says. It, like if they show you the truth of everything <clears throat> and they still can't let him go, they can't let it go. Because like all the same things that keep you in a cult that suck you into a cult and keep you in are the same things that suck you into a grifter's personality and their brand and keep you in that grifter's following. It's the same thing. So I find it, I find this whole thing so interesting because I've fallen for it and it's so easy to fall for industry and don't think for a second that you're done with a business coach once you buy that course no once you buy that course they're going to find a way to sell you something else something more expensive once they hook you in they are not going to let you go these con artists are right that's called a sales funnel and that's a normal sales tactic but like i mentioned before there's something about using uh even normal sales tactics and coupling it with the emotional high that you have that's not normal right when you're trying to if you let's say you you sign up for a spa right they have a sales funnel right maybe there's an introductory little 20 minute facial and then you can pay for an hour facial and then well what about our membership package and like there's a sales funnel with a spa but you don't have an emotional attachment to a spa, right? There, there's, you, you don't like look at the estheticians like, oh my gosh, you are my hope and my dream. That's not the reason that you're going to the spa. You're going to the spa because you need a service. They did a good job with the free thing. They did a good job with the next thing. So you trust them to keep doing a good job. So you go down the sales funnel. But these grifters, they're not having you go down the sales funnel because they're doing a good job. They're having you go down the funnel because you are too emotionally attached to them 
and they have done that by design. We're praying on women with aspirations, with financial needs, these women who have to make incredible sacrifices to pay for these courses, only to find that they need to spend more money and more resources after buying a course. If you buy an online course and you don't have an audience, you don't have a reach, you need to pay a lot of money in ads. You have to reach a hundred. And even if you pay a crap ton of money in ads, your ads could still flop. It is so difficult to figure out how to get your ads to work. It's so hard. When you, when you have no following and you don't have a lot of money, it's so hard. 100,000 people in the hopes to sell to 1,000. You buy the course on how to make money selling courses for $2,000, and then you need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars more on ads to sell it. But they don't talk about that. They love telling you how much they make and seven figure this and six figure that. And they don't tell you how much money they spend to make money. But I Oh yeah, that's something I, I learned. You know, when I got into the Marie Forleo B school, I was now exposed to uh, all of these women who have been doing this, right? Like, you know, th these women who I looked up to, I saw them, you know, as Marie Forleo's um, friends and, oh man, they're killing it. They're doing a great job. And I was able to see the truth of, oh, well, so-and-so, yeah, she made a million dollars in revenue, but she spent $800,000 on just the marketing and ads and hiring people to, to make them and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, wow. So 200,000 and then after taxes, and then paying for like whatever, like, oh, she actually didn't. I mean, hmm, I mean, I got hmm. <laughs> yes, you don't need to work. And the other thing is, um, if you do bring up the, well, your course is teaching me how to sell a course. Uh, that doesn't seem right. You know, I don't have experience in, in the thing that I'm teaching. And they'll tell you. And it's like, and why should like, why can't I just tell them to take your course? Why would I make a course teaching how to make a course when I'm just saying the same thing that you're saying? They'll say that, well, you have a unique spin, which is true. You have a unique personality, a, a unique spin, a, a different look, a different vibe, a different brand that maybe somebody resonates with more. And that is very true. But there's something disingenuous about it when it's somebody who's literally just making it for a cash grab and they actually don't even know what they're talking about. Worry about that. If you truly, truly believe in yourself, just just dream big, you know, maybe, I don't know, manifest it. You know, I have to go there. You know, I have to go there. Most of the women in the business coaching spaces are white, thin, able-bodied, and conventionally attractive. Very few people. Yo, that's something I don't even think about. I mean, I think about, you know, I think about those privileges often, but I, I don't even think about the able body thing, but heavy on that, heavy on that, because um, something I've noticed here lately is, did, did, did anyone else notice there was this month, this couple of months where everybody is diagnosed with ADHD, like everybody started going to the aim almond clinic. Jeez Louise. Everybody started going to the almond clinic and was getting like this fake ADHD diagnosis. Um, <laughs> and then they would like talk about it. They would do live streams about, Oh my gosh, y'all I have ADHD. This explains everything in my life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Y'all. Oh my God. And it's like, okay, first of all, you, your diagnosis, your diagnosis isn't real. It's like another, <laughs> Look, let me not be too cynical here, right? Because if I went to the Amen Clinic and they told me you have ADHD and I'm like, well, you're not actual, I don't think Dr. Is Dr. Da Daniel Amen actually licensed? I'm saying it's fake, but let's see. Uh, is he a chiropractor? Please, is he a chiropractor? Is he a chiropractor? I don't know. I'm going to have to look more into that. I just do not trust. I do not trust. I don't trust him. I'm sorry. Look at this image, this sales image I have of him. Um, I don't, I just don't trust him. I just, I just don't trust. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't trust. I just don't trust. 
but um i was saying i don't want to be too skeptic right if i found that out even if i'm already successful i would talk about it too i'd be like oh my gosh you guys i found out i have adhd I would talk about it too. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with talking about it. It just, it just, I just found it very suspicious that all of you just at the same time realize that you're not actually completely fully able-bodied. Like, do we call that able being able-bodied or like all of you just found out you're neurodivergent, that you're not neurotypical. And now you're going to use that. Like Marie Forleo, she's selling um, like a time management thing right? And time management is something that's very difficult for people with ADHD to get a grip on. I still, I am in a new phase of life and I am still struggling with time management. It is something that's very, very difficult. It's a very, it's very painful. And she's using that, oh, I think I have ADHD. She's using that as a sales tactic to, 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 to sell her overpriced time management class. I just don't feel okay about it. I just, but anyway, heavy on what you're saying. People can replicate their success by doing what they're doing. By running a newsletter, by starting a podcast, by starting a YouTube channel. As women, let's be honest with other women about the privilege we hold if we fall into any of those categories. And we, and we really need to, we really need to. Another thing that I, I wish more of these women would talk about is um, if you have a partner, life with a supportive partner is is totally different than when you're single and I just I don't know I feel some kind of way when um and you know I'm, I'm as I'm thinking I'm thinking about do men do this too do men talk about like is is there a difference I don't know I don't you know I don't I feel like a lot of the male grifters I've seen, they were grifting before, even before they met their spouse. So I don't think about it as much. Um, but anyway, obviously there are a lot of successful single women um, or a lot of uh, successful women who they were on their grind before they met their partner type of thing. Like I'm not, discrediting that at all but there are women who are grifting if if you if you are really into like looking into grifters you probably know like who is coming to my mind right now <laughs> there are women who are grifting who try to tell this this rags to riches story and they fail to mention that their husband was making a lot of money and was supporting her in the business. Like they, they, and that there's nothing wrong with that is still your story can still, that's what I say about same thing with Grant Cardone. There was something Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone does a similar thing, not a line about, Oh, about I did all my own my wife didn't help me but he would talk about like I don't know he would he would talk about how he didn't have this he didn't have money he didn't have and it's like yes you actually yes you did actually actually yes you did like I always feel like your story would still be inspirational even if you address the privileges that you had it will still be inspirational like um that one lady who she got so mad that her her followers were like saying Rachel you're really privileged you have a lady come clean your toilets you're really privileged and she got so mad at her followers like miss ma'am <laughs> I just feel like your story is still compelling people still relate can still relate to you people can still take away the message even if you include the aspect that you feel makes you appear too privileged. You know what I mean? There's no need to omit something that's very, very critical <laughs> in your success. If you're interested in business, I encourage you to look at other avenues to learn. You can access free business books from the library. You can also look for nonprofits and community programs that are made for women looking to start a business. You can check out the women. 
own small business federal contracting program. So this is something else that I noticed with these courses. They never talk about these resources. Yes, your community has your, your country. Well, in the United States, there are federal programs. There are community-based programs. There are local programs that are put in place to help you. The SBA is a huge, like the SBA is so underused. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. The Small Business Administration. The SBA is specifically trying to help people of the global majority, women, veterans, um, you know, people with some form of disability. Like there, there's all these different categories of people that they are trying to target to encourage these groups of people to become business owners. They want to encourage these groups of these groups of people to become business owners because if people in that community can be a part of moving the economy that is more money that is that is more movement circulating in a diversity of I'm blasting into my mic money that moves and circulates in a diversity of locations and communities benefits the entire country's economy okay there are grants there are aid programs there there is networking there is there is so many things that is available for free for you. There are um, loan business loans that with no interest. There is so many wonderful benefits and, and free education to teach you actual real business to benefit you. There is so much stuff out there. And these courses will never mention it. They will never, they, ne they will never mention it. They never mention it. I don't know why. Well, the cynic in me feels that they don't mention it because they want you to rely on the grifter. The grifter wants you to keep relying on them for help and not to seek help elsewhere. That's the cynic in me. The, the, the balanced part of me is like, maybe they didn't know, <laughs> which is BS. They have to know. Like, especially someone like Marie Forleo, she knows. That's BS. Um, so I don't know. But it's disheartening because it could help so many small business owners. This program provides support to women entrepreneurs by offering business training, counseling, federal contracts and access to credit and capital. If you're looking at entrepreneurship, selling online courses, unless you have something to actually teach, obviously, hashtag not all courses are garbage. Look outside of social media for these grants, for these programs, for these free resources that can actually help you, that can teach you something about business, not just how to teach so you can scam other people. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. So, um, oh, wait, okay. So yeah, um, Personal I have to agree with everything that she said and it, it immediately goes into another video, but yeah, I was somebody who all of those courses, all of those masterminds, I used to dream about those $10,000 masterminds. I used to dream about it. Um, I was somebody who was so, so, so into that. And everything that she says is true and, and, and very common. Um, my advice the to, rise of to, <laughs> I don't want to sound like Kim Kardashian. My advice to women in business. <laughs> Wait, what did Kim say? <laughs> advice to women in business. Uh, can we find it anymore? I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. She says it the cuss like word. Nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. Have a good work environment where everyone loves what they do because you have one life. No toxic work environments. 
and show up and do the work. I have the best advice. For so women. what's funny is I think she um, did an interview explaining this. And it is exactly what I thought it was, which is uh, she was having issues in her own business with employees, maybe not coming to work on time or whatever. Um, like just dealing with employees who are not excited. And <laughs> that's what I figured she was referring to. But I just find it funny because nobody, nobody's going to relate to that. Um, th th this thing was so funny because that was her advice to women in business. And it's, um, it just feels a lot like the grifters, right? Um, have the right mindset, just work hard, just hustle hard. But we all know you can work very hard and, and never, never achieve that kind of level of financial success. Now, I am not a super rich person. I'm not a Marie Forleo. I'm not worth multi millions of dollars. I'm not worth billion like Kim Kardashian. Um, but as somebody who has paid for a lot of these e courses, seminars, group coaching, um, whatever, one on one coaching, as somebody who has spent a lot of money for this. <laughs> Um, my advice would be to look into, yeah, take, take an actual business course, like go to your community college and like sign up for the, their actual business courses because they will teach you actual business stuff. Like, no, it's not going to have the fun little mindset vision board yay it's not gonna have that it's not gonna it's not gonna have all these attractive bells and whistles that the e-courses have but it has the real stuff like the reality like the what the irs is going to be asking from you at the end of the year like it has the real stuff and i th i think before you start business you need to understand the real stuff you need to know the real stuff before you start playing around like because if you want to spend two grand on the course spend two grand on the course but just know that there's more to business than what these e-courses teach you and it behooves you to learn that first and then try your hand at you know whatever else you want to do fancy so anyway thank you for um hanging out with me for an hour i just i i Camille Colazzo, I am enjoying your work. I hope you post more frequently um, because I think I think this discussion is needed and I think this discussion is going to happen more and more um, as crypto scammers, uh, <laughs> as we have Crypto Zoo, we have Sam Bankman Freed, we have um, like like more and more of these exposés are going to happen and this discourse is going to continue. And I think it's a heavily needed discourse and mind you for all the skepticism, skepticism, how do I say that word for all the crap I give like manifestation and stuff like that. I still like to do it for fun. I still think feeling good is important um, I wanted to, I totally was planning on like making a video about my vision board, making a vision board and stuff like that. Um, and just, well, then reality hit <laughs> and I, I couldn't focus on that right now, but, um, I just have to agree like that, that kind of stuff doesn't, it doesn't really belong in a business course. And if, if you are going to put it in a business course, that's fun too. That's great. But can you also please have some real stuff? Have some real stuff. Stop trying to create a cult in your name and like actually help people instead of giving the appearance of helping people. Actually help them. Actually help change their lives. That's all we want. Just be for real.
please. All right. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Give this a thumbs up because, um, because, because we want more people to join us. And until next time, much love, much luck.